Hi, I'm Paula Disbro. I'm the executive chef of Fire and Smoke Society, and we're back for another edition of PK.edu. And I don't know about you guys, but we've got appetizers on our mind for the big game. So we've got four of them that we can't wait to share that we're gonna fire up for you today. Okay, the first thing we're gonna make is one of my favorites. It's a smoked salmon spread. It's really easy to prepare. And as a bonus, you can make it a day or two in advance. It keeps beautifully in the fridge. Okay, I've got a really nice piece of Norwegian farm-raised salmon. When you're smoking salmon, I always go for oilier varieties. If you get a wild, leaner variety, it can dry out more easily on the grill. I'm gonna drizzle it with olive oil. Next, I'm gonna season it with Fishmonger, one of our newest spice blends. It's got a wonderful fresh flavor that brings out the best in fish without overpowering it. I'm gonna let it marinate for about 20 minutes while I'm waiting for the fire. And as you'll see, I've set up a two zone fire for cooking, which I always do when I smoke anything. I'm gonna add some hot water to this side in a drip pan because it creates that humidity you want that allows the smoky flavors to stick to the fish. Okay, now we're ready for our smoke source. I'm gonna add a couple chunks of hardwood, this is oak, to the periphery of the fire. So you can see I'm not gonna put it in the hottest part because it will ignite pretty quickly. I'm gonna close the grill and I'm gonna vent it for smoking. This is open, this is closed over the fire. This is open, this is closed. That means the air is gonna move up and over the smoked salmon. I have the salmon here on two pieces of heavy-duty foil, so I put it over indirect heat. I'm going to close the grill. So I like to stick right around 300. If your fire gets too hot, adjust the right side under the fire. Just turn that closed a little bit. That snuffs a little air out of the fire and it'll help take the temperature down. While the salmon smokes, we're going to combine the creamy elements of the spread. We have eight ounces of cream cheese, softened, a half cup of sour cream. We have a tablespoon of Creole mustard. We have four scallions that are thinly sliced, a dash of Worcestershire sauce, dash of hot sauce, and the finely grated zest of one lemon, and finally the juice of one lemon. Okay, I'm gonna puree that down. Okay, I just pulled the salmon from the grill it smells delicious. I'm gonna set it aside and let it cool for a bit before I combine it with the other ingredients. Okay, I blended this together and I allowed the salmon to cool for a bit. Now I'm gonna add pieces of the smoked salmon, which is delicious by the way. 30 minutes is always the magic number. What I like to do is pulse it so there are still nice pieces of salmon um, visible. So it's more of a coarse texture, whatever you like. So we're gonna blend it and then we're gonna chill it for a bit. It's really a crowd pleaser, whether you're making it for the big game or brunch. Uh, I think you would agree with me that it wouldn't be a game party without some chicken wings. So I'm using drumettes, a little over three pounds. You can use full on wings if you prefer. And these are gonna be seasoned with one of our newest blends, Wing Magic. If you like chipotle chili, smoked paprika, things like that with a little hit of lime, you're gonna love it. First, we're gonna dust them with some baking powder. Then we're gonna generously season them. And then we're just gonna toss them. We are going to serve this with a creamy garlic dip that we'll prepare while this marinates. Hey, Bronson, go deep. Go deep. Yes! We're going to whisk this together, and uh, it's great to do now because it's best if it has a minute to chill and allow the flavors to meld. We have some mayonnaise. We have Mexican crema, and we also have cotija. We have six finely chopped scallions and it's garlic dip so we have four large cloves of minced garlic I'm gonna do a dash of hot sauce and instead of salt I'm gonna use a little bit of fire and smoke society holy garlic I'm just gonna do a teaspoon and that's gonna be all we need for seasoning so whisk that together and then I'll just put it in a serving bowl and chill it while we cook the chicken. Okay, so our dip is chilling and these wings have marinated with the spices nicely. So I'm gonna crisp them over direct heat. They're gonna be joined with some grilled red Fresno chilies and some shishito, shishito chilies. 
so I have this vent open, which is allowing air to fuel the fire. This vent is closed up top. This is open just a little bit because I want a little higher temperature. So I'm getting a little air in there to fuel the coals and this is open. So we want to keep the temperature right around 300, 325. It can, it can go to 350. And so this is just kind of a juggle game until you get the browning you want and then they're going to go live on indirect heat. We're gonna toss the, the cooked chicken wings with these charred chilies. I have red Fresno chilies and shishitos, both delicious when they're grilled. As you can see, I've moved the chicken wings to finish up on indirect heat, and I've preheated this grill basket. So the minute the chilies hit it, there'll be that nice sizzle. And we're just gonna char them up and let them get blackened in a few spots. And they're gonna look great with the wings. They're gonna taste great. Our wings have finished cooking to juicy perfection over indirect heat. So I'm gonna take them off now and toss them with the chilies. And now I just wanna finish them with a couple more elements. So we're squeezing on some fresh limes and a few shots of your favorite hot sauce. And finally, I have cilantro here. Boy, that smells great, doesn't it, Bronson? I'm gonna give them a nice toss. Looks like somebody's wings are gonna upstage the ball game. Bronson, I think uh, wing magic wings with charred chilies would go really delicious with Fire Eagle from our friends at Austin Beer Works. Cheers, buddy. It's beer o'clock. Okay, Bronson, it's the moment of truth. These look so amazing. I just have to dig into one of these. A little bit of garlic dip. Amazing. Our next recipe is our riff on the classic artichoke and spinach dip. The truth is you can use any green to make this dip. So I just cut out the stem like so. Just fold it in half and run the knife along the stem. Stack the greens, roll them up into a tight cylinder, and you've got nice rounds of green to saute. So I have a cast iron skillet over direct heat and a medium high fire. It's actually been preheating a bit, so it's a little hot. I'm just gonna add the greens, put a little bit of salt on here. So we're just gonna turn and saute them until they turn kind of a bright emerald green and the texture is more tender. Okay, while our collards cool, I'm gonna to stir together the creamy ingredients of this dip. I have eight ounces of cream cheese. I have a cup and a half, get down, of, of sharp cheddar cheese schnitzel, get down. The finely grated zest of one lemon. So I'm gonna do a shot of hot sauce, like to taste. You can use anything you want. Kind of felt like using sambal. And our secret ingredient is our new spice potato slayer that's a friend of all vegetables. We're gonna do two teaspoons of that. And then we'll fold in the cool collards and put it in a smaller cast iron skillet. I like to work with frozen artichokes. So there is a trick with using them though. They tend to contain a lot of moisture. So I just put them in a clean dish towel and uh, you wanna squeeze them. See all that? You're gonna get a lot of water from them. Now I'm gonna fold the artichokes into the cheese dip and add our collards and we're good to go. Once this is mixed evenly, I'm gonna transfer the entire mixture to this smaller cast iron skillet. We're gonna bake it over indirect heat. Our grill's already nice and hot for us. And then when, it's, when the cheese is bubbly and the top is golden brown, we're ready for crackers. It came out so well, you guys. It's uh, creamy and yummy. And we're gonna load on a Triscuit and uh, that's, that's your party right there. Okay, last but not least, we've got the queen of all appetizers for game day. Uh, uh, so we're gonna make some queso and I'm gonna do my own little spin on it. We're gonna char some vegetables, mix it with the creamy stuff, and it's gonna be another show stealer, I gotta say. So I'm gonna char these uh, uh, vegetables directly over the heat, the chilies and the tomatoes. You can use serranos or jalapenos. I have a preheated grill basket here. No oil necessary. I just want a nice kind of blistering blackened flavor that's gonna be great with the rich cheese. So the tomatoes went right into the food processor. I'm gonna stem the serranos. I'm gonna add some cilantro to that. 
Look, I'm going to do a little pinch of salt there with the vegetables. Beautiful coarse puree of chilies and cilantro and tomatoes. So I'm going to sizzle that in some oil right on the grill. I'm going to season it with uh, one of our new blends, Taco Secret, which is a friend to all tacos, fajitas, chili, beans, any sort of Mexican flavor profile. So my sauce came to a simmer. I reduced some of that moisture, so I added the American cheese. Now I'm gonna add the second cheese. We have a pound of American and a pound of Mexican style cheeses. And we're gonna add half of these scallions now to cook into the mixture and half we'll use as a garnish. So as the cheese starts to melt, you wanna add a little, some kind of dairy to create the right, the creamy texture that you want. I'm gonna use Mexican crema because it's so delicious. It's rich and thick and tangy, but you can also use whole milk. You can use sour cream. You can use uh, whole milk yogurt, Greek yogurt. You just wanna add a little liquid to get that right level of gooiness. It's queso time, We're bringing this party to a close, but what a close it is. We've got the charred chilies and tomatoes in there, blue corn chips, two kinds of cheese, Mexican cheese, American cheese. It looks amazing. Mm -mm. Bronson, get your chip in there. This is a wrap and it's a very happy wrap. Happy, happy game day, everybody.